Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the island of Terra de Hot off the southern coast of Guadeloupe. And we're here today to, uh, or I'm here today to introduce you to what I believe is the uh, the holy grail of Microsoft Flight Simulator settings, uh, graphic settings. Um, I put up a video yesterday testing this, and it worked exactly like I wanted it to. And so uh, I want to share it with you guys. I didn't really have planned to do this today, but I've got some time. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, we are basically all uh, CPU limited in Microsoft Flight Simulator. All of us are, mi are main thread limited, right? And um, what that means is that our, our CPUs get maxed out the single thread that is the main driver of microsoft flight simulator get gets maxed out before um our graphics card you know is fully utilized essentially um so typically you know you've got that one thread on your cpu that's getting you know that's getting maxed out meanwhile your gpu is running at you know 30 40 50 percent um, and you've got all that spare GPU power available, but you just can't access it because if you increase your uh, graphic settings any further, it, all it does is just get wasted because the CPU can't process anything more. Um, so the key question is, how do we get more uh, performance out of our GPU when we're CPU limited? Um, one answer, of course, is to buy a better CPU. Um, I'm running a 12,700K, which is not uh, overclocked. And the reason I don't overclock is just I, I, I just I don't want to take the risk of damaging it. And um, you can try and buy something that's better. But even if you look at like you know 13,900K or whatever the whatever the max you know on offer is nowadays. You're only looking at, you know, 10, 15, 20 percent better. So it's not it's not night and day, and not a night and day change. And you're talking, you know, a lot of money, and it's just not worth it. So the question is, how do we get the rest of that GPU power that's available that we can't use? And if you if you see my uh, my overlay on the upper left corner, I'm using right now 80 percent of my GPU. Um, and before I started doing what I'm going to show you, I was getting probably, you know, yeah, 30, 40, 50 percent. And in, you know, places like uh, Miami, you know, big airports. And uh, meanwhile, my main thread was getting hammered. And, um, you know, I get pretty good performance out of this. It's, a uh, you know, 12,700K, 3080Ti. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. Um, but I've unlocked what I think is the is the real key to getting the most performance out of your system. Now this is only going to work if you have an RTX card. So in other words an RTX, I think the lowest is RTX 2060. Um, so the 2 series cards, the 3 series cards, the 4 series cards, and it has to be a NVIDIA card, it's not going to work on AMD. Although maybe somebody can figure out how to make it work on, a, you know, how what the AMD equivalent is and share that with everybody um, would be fantastic as well. So I'm going to start today, uh, the reason I'm showing you this scene is because otherwise we'll just be looking at my desktop, which would be really boring. Um, so instead we'll look at this really cool scenery, and this is a freeware scenery by the way, which is pretty amazing. Um, so I'm going to start today talking about something that we're not going to use, which is called DSR, which is a, uh, a NVIDIA technology called, uh, which is called dynamic, dynamic Super Resolution. And what Dynamic Super Resolution does is basically the opposite of DLSS, which is the, um, Deep Learning Super Sampling, which is the thing that I've done the, the couple videos on before. This video is going to be a bit longer just because I want to try to explain as much as I can um, and not have to do three versions of this one. The other thing is you guys are going to have to tweak this uh, the settings a little bit to get your best performance. It's not a it's not a set and forget. I mean it is once you once you get your settings made, um, but 
it's unlikely that you're going to be able to exactly copy my settings and have a you know have a perfect you know outcome you're going to have to tweak them to get your best settings and so i would encourage you to, to watch this part of the video which d explains everything so that when you when you get to the stage where you need to tweak your settings you're going to be able to do that intelligently and understand what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish and um so let me go through uh first of all dsr which is dynamic super resolution dynamic super resolution essentially like i said the opposite of dlss what it does is it renders the game the sim at a higher resolution than your monitor and then it squeezes or shrinks the uh resolution the higher resolution down to fit your monitor um, using uh, well the DSR is just a it's code it's a program um, and so DSR was uh, I can I suppose I can show you just for um, just for showing a different screen here so DSR if you go into NVIDIA control panel and this is normally off. You'll see DSR factors off. So you'll see legacy scaling, right? And DSR only worked on even numbers of upscales. It upscales the, the image, right? So two percent, uh, two times, three times, and four times were the ones that were always recommended. Um, and really, the only one that was worthwhile is four times. And what that means is, if you had DSR four times enabled you would be if you're on a, a 1080p system uh 1k uh it would up uh upscale your image to 4k four times right four times 1k and then it would and then it would shrink that upscaled image down to fit your 1k screen so you would you would be getting 4k resolution 4k quality graphics on a 1080 screen and that's why everything is so super sharp. Um, of course, there's drawbacks to doing that, which is performance, right? So there's there's, there's downsides to everything. Um, DSR worked; it was okay, uh, but again, it was it was taxing on the system, um, and you know, kind of iffy as to whether it was worth it or not. There is a new system from, I don't know, new, but within the last couple of years um, from new video called DLDSR. And the DL in DLDSR is the same DL in DLSS. So DLDSR is deep learning dynamic super resolution. And what this is, and that these are the two things that you, that you see enabled here, 1.78 and 2.25. Um, DLDSR is AI uh, is the AI version of DSR, right? And so it upscales your image and then shrinks it down to fit your screen, giving you much better um, resolution, much better, a sharper, much better looking image uh, on a, on whatever, you know, uh, resolution you have. Now, 1.78 times and 2.25 times, don't ask me where they came up with those two, um, but for example, like I have 2K, so and I'm using 2.25 right now, and so what that means is it's two my 2K times 2.25. Um, so essentially, what it's doing is I I'm getting 4.5K upscaled, and then um, DLDSR sh squeezes that image back down to fit my screen. Um, and there's this smoothness thing here, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so, uh, DLDSR is is much better optimized. Um, you'll see here, uh, NVIDIA says it's two times more efficient than um, the DSR. So, um, that's what I'm using to get a much better image but of course even though it's it's much it's much more optimized and it, it functions much better um there's still a performance hit um obviously if you're if you're putting you know 
2.25 times the number of pixels and then shrinking it down, it's gonna, there's going to be a performance difficulty. But here's the key. The hardware that is doing that work is not your CPU, which is already maxed out. What is doing that work is your GPU. It's not affecting your CPU at all. So, you know, this CPU 17% is misleading, right? Because, you know, when Microsoft and Asobo uh, started creating Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, <laughs> un unbelievably, they decided to start by using the code from uh, FSX. Um, and so that's why it's single thread you know, limited still. So even though my entire CPU, which is, I don't know, 16 cores or whatever it is, um, is only working at 16%, one of them is getting hammered and is working at 100%. And so therefore I can't, you know, my system can't perform any better, give me any better, um, you know, performance in the sim. With DLDSR, I now have access so normally my, my GPU would be running at, you know, say 40%. So now with DLDSR, upscaling the image 2.25 times and then squeezing it down onto my screen, that's all done with the GPU. And now I have access to the rest of the performance, the rest of the uh, power of my GPU. It's actually being used now instead of just sitting there doing nothing. Um, the, the real key to this, what unlocked the door to using it, was now combining it with DLSS, okay? Now, they do the opposite things. DLDSR upscales the image and then shrinks it. Uh, DLSS downscales the image. It takes, it'll, it'll take you from like a 2K image to, you know, 80% or 90% or 70% of that image and then stretch it to fill your screen, which is why you get the ghosting, because you're, there's less pixels being broadcast, so to speak, onto your, onto your screen, um, and they're being, you know, it's, it's through the magic of AI, it's, it's being filled, right, your screen, even though it's only got 80% of the pixels that it had before, but you're saving that 20% of, uh, of, um, performance required so you're getting uh, better performance because you're only running 80% of your system basically on the same screen um, by the way if anybody knows more about this technology than me the least surprised person in the room is me and so um, if I don't explain something exactly correct or like you know whatever if, if you feel like going in the comments and saying you have no idea what you're talking about I totally understand my point here isn't to be exactly like I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to give a computer science class. I'm just trying to explain as best as I understand how this works. So now we've got DLDSR going, right? And we've got 2.25 times the pixels squeezed down onto my screen. So the image is unbelievable. And if you, if you look, you just see um, the the depth perception along the ridges and stuff is just amazing and the same thing with the building like look at like the edge of the building and how you can see the depth behind it it's it's just it's unbelievable but you've got this performance hit because you're doing again 2.25 times what uh, your system would otherwise be doing um, so what we do then is add DLSS on top of DLDSR and DLSS then takes that DLDSR image and shrinks it, right? Uh, or, or downscales it rather, you know, a certain percentage and then broadcasts that to your screen. Now, why would we want to downscale after we've upscaled? Here's why. We've upscaled 2.25 times. So 225% of what we had is what we've upscaled to. In, in terms of the image, right? With DLDSR. With DLSS, you're only downscaling 10% or 15%. So you're going up 225% and then you're taking 90% of that 225% and 
to your screen. So you're basically what we're doing with DLSS on top of DLSR, DLDSR, is clawing back some of the performance that we've that we've lost because we're using so much more of the GPU. And this is all done in the GPU side. So you are not uh, you're not taxing your CPU anymore. We're just accessing what's available to us on the GPU. So let's go into my settings. Um, and this is where you're going to have, now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of things. Um, but so you can see I've got DLSS super resolution quality. And I think I should have looked this up before I started recording this, but I think it, um, it downscales the image maybe 10%. Um, and then, you know, up, so you're getting 90% of what you would have had. And then it's, and then it's stretching the image to fit onto your screen. So you're getting, you know, you're losing essentially 10% of your image quality. And then AI is magically making it better. And, and you go, and you get better performance and good visuals. That's the whole point. That's the whole idea. So um, now let me show you how to set this whole thing up. So when you go into NVIDIA Control Panel, um, there's a couple things that I've changed. Uh, but the first thing you're going to have to do, this is normally going to be off, and I've got my SIM on, so I can't turn it off. And... Uh, and show you how to turn it on, but you just, it'll say DSS factors, DSR factors off. You just click on it to open it up and select these two settings. Okay, and then click OK. And what that's going to do when you start your sim again, you're going to get higher resolutions in the full, in the full screen resolution option than you actually have. So my screen is 2560 times four, by 1440. That's what I have. This is 1.78 times this. This is what I'm running is 2.25 times this, right? So you're going to want to select, I would suggest trying 2.25 first. I'll, I'll go through that in a second. I would suggest trying 2.25 first, seeing how that goes. So you come into the sim, you select the higher resolution. Okay, um, you don't have to do it necessarily in this order. There's a couple other things that I changed. Now smoothness, um, it's not image, it's not uh, uh, like movement smoothness. It's image smoothness. So um, I believe that uh, yeah. So uh, the lower, basically, what DSR smoothness does is sharpens the image. So if you set it to 100% there is no uh, sharpening of the image at all. If you set it to 0%, there's 100% sharpening. So it basically works in reverse in terms of sharpening. 0% is 100% sharpened. 100% is 0% sharpened. The suggested value to use is somewhere between 30 and 60%. Um, I have found 60% works pretty well for me. Um, I actually had low latency mo mode on, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. The other thing, the other key to getting this to work, texture filtering quality, high quality. The, the standard value is quality. Set it to high quality because we're getting so much better performance um, because we're using uh, DLSS on top of DL DSR. You get more performance out of it so we want to use high quality so that gives you a much better image um then if you go into oh the other thing was the other thing was uh ba -ba -ba, did i turn that on in here no i did not i turned it on in program settings so this is the other one anastropic filtering 16 times i had this off and or i had this to use the in-game setting um and now I have it set to 16 times. And that is what I think got rid of the water distortion that I talked about yesterday. Now, image scaling is off. We don't want any image scaling. Um, low latency mode, this is what I was talking about. Ultra. So basically, um, it makes the system more reactive quicker. I don't, that's not a point of this video. Try ultra for low latency mode 
Um, the other thing I have on is threaded optimization, um, and that's for uh, com you know computers with uh, CPUs that have multiple threads, like mine does, and, and yours does for sure. Um, but the keys are ultra low latency mode and that 16 times anisotropic filtering. Um, some people say set power mode to uh, prefer maximum performance. I leave it at normal. And the reason why I do that is because, first of all, it works just fine like it is right now. Um, but when you have it on prefer maximum performance, the fans sound like there's a vacuum in the room, like a vacuum cleaner. It's so loud. They're just, they're just full on all the time, and it's irritating. Um, so I just leave that normal. Um, and then you're good to go. When I make these changes in, uh, in NVIDIA control panel, I do it with, uh, Microsoft flight simulator, uh, not running and then make any changes that I want to make in here, apply them, save it. You don't save it. You just apply it and then restart Microsoft flight, flight simulator. So I, anytime I make changes in NVIDIA control panel, I, I, close out of the sim, make the changes, apply, and then open the sim again. I don't know if you have to do that, um, but that's just what I've done as I've worked on this. Um, so then what you do, come into your graphic settings. Um, you have to select DSL, DLSS super resolution to get this to work, right? Um, you select, I would recommend you know whatever the highest setting is you're gonna find find so the the third one from the bottom should be your native resolution and then this should be 1.78 times this and then this should be two times 2.25 times this right so you select the highest resolution you have available now when i only ran dlss to me the best picture quality that i got uh, particularly in planes with glass cockpits, was DLSS paired with DLAA, which not a lot of people even know exists, right? So you you have quality, you have balance, you have performance. Now, quality is the least amount of downscaling of your image from DLSS, followed by balanced, followed by performance, followed by ultra performance. Now, most people don't know that if you go left from quality, there's auto. And most people don't know that if you keep going, you get DLAA. Um, which is deep learning anti-aliasing. Now, this the whole deep learning stuff is really good, right? I think I hope you're starting to realize that. Um, so my preferred setup before I did this was DLSS, DLAA. Most people either don't know that exists or they try quality or balance or whatever. For this, what we're doing here today, it's DLSS quality. That's where you want to start. You want to start with your highest resolution, DLSS quality. Uh, and what I did, again, 12,700K, 3080 Ti, uh, 36 gigabytes of RAM. That's my system. Um, what I do is I set just a stock, because I've been messing around with settings so much that I had to kind of tone back the changes that I would make, because otherwise I'd, I'd be making a thousand changes every time I tried something different. So what I've done is I've simply gone to Ultra. I select the, the Ultra preset, and I leave everything exactly there. I think I turned Shadow Maps up. I think that's the only one. Or it might be Texture Super Sampling. Uh, is the only one that I don't, or that I do change. And I turn off Motion Blur, because Motion Blur is terrible. I, I don't know why anybody would want Motion Blur on. But, so I set the highest resolution, DLSS, quality, and then I just select uh, Ultra. Close out of it, and I'm done. Uh, and then, with the DLS enabled, DL, DSR enabled, excuse me. Um, try keeping all this straight, by the way. It's not easy. Uh, so, with DL, DSR enabled, and then... DLSS enabled on top of it, this is what we get. We get this unbelievable resolution. 
with good performance. Look at this. I mean, I'm, uh, my my screen. Uh, I have a 2K screen, 60 megahertz. I'm at six. Uh, uh, granted, this is not the most complicated scenery in the world, um, which is one of the beauties of flying in the Caribbean, by the way. Uh, that you get, you, you you're in a beautiful area that doesn't require a ton of, you know, that gives you a little bit of a break. Let's put it that way. Over like Miami or New York or LA, um, and if you see inside do you see any lag i don't i mean I'm, I'm using uh track ir5 right um i don't see any lag it's 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 phenomenal and the views are unbelievable um the graphics are unbelievable and the performance is unbelievable so you get the the best of both worlds um so essentially what you're doing is you're upscaling the image 2.25 times with the LDSR and then downscaling that image 10% or 15% with DLSS and this is what you get and it's just it's it's mind blowing when you see it on your own system for the first time it's mind blowing now tweaks if you want to tweak this let's say you set it to this and it doesn't work for you for whatever reason you're not getting good performance where whatever it may be you're flying in you know Europe or you're flying in you know big cities in the US it doesn't give you the performance you want the first thing to do um, is to take this quality setting and go that way and what I would recommend is uh, go from quality to performance apply try it again okay if that is really good I, I don't think ultra performance is a good pick because you're, you're giving back too much of what you've gained right because this this down samples the image like 40 percent um i really wish i looked up what the numbers were before i started this but um so i would that would be the first thing i would try to do is go to performance see how that is apply and save go out see how that is if that doesn't work for you, um, the next thing I would try, and this is the beauty of DLDSR, um, I would come back out here, close out of your sim, come back here, uh, or actually, no, 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 I'm sorry, you don't even have to do that. So look, you've got the 1.78 and the 2.25 enabled, right? So you don't have to close out of anything, pardon me. All you would do in that case, please, um, is then simply open the full screen resolution and go from this, which is 2.25, down to this, which is 1.78. And God knows where they came up with, you know, 1.78. It's apparently the most efficient. Uh, you know, 1.78 and 2.25. Come out, select the next lower down. It's going to be one step up from your native resolution. Select that. Select quality again. Come back out. See what it looks like. See how it works. If it gives you what you want. Um, if it doesn't. What am I doing? If it doesn't. My next step would be. Again. At this. You know 1.78 resolution. Do the same thing. Try performance. Um, and from there, you would, you would really want to, you know, start backing off some use. You know, if that doesn't give you what you're looking for, if you're on performance, 1.78 performance, and you're not getting what you want, um, the first thing, you know, maybe tune down objects level of details, and then start tuning TLOD down little by little by little until you get what you want. Um, I'm really hopeful that for most people, they're going to be able to, at the very least, do the 1.78 performance setting with everything else maxed and, and really get a pretty good performance out of the sim. Um, and that's the long and the short of it, guys. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. Oh, yes. Okay. So one thing 
that came up during the discussion. Uh, I, I read through a zillion forums, and there's so many different opinions. I've tried them all. The one thing you should not do, which you can do, okay? This is my display resolution for my monitor. This is the same thing that's in the full screen resolution options in the sim. This is native. This is my, my native 1440 screen, 2K. This is 2K times 1.78. This is 2K times 2.25. You can select that, okay, um, to match whatever you have selected in the sim. You don't need to do that. Leave your desktop uh, resolution at native. Don't change it. That's, that's a big one. Um, the only other thing, I just had this one, uh, I was actually going to show this earlier. So this is uh, a native image and FPS in 1080p and obviously a different game. This is DSR. So this is what you're, this is what you're, um, losing in performance because you're using now, see, this is 1080p. This is now 4k upscaled squeeze down onto a 1080p screen you're losing from 145 fps to 108 fps this is with dldsr with that native 1080p image upscaled it's not 4k but it's upscaled and you're getting now almost the same fps as you were getting before and the image pretty darn good i don't know how well that image is going to come out on the screen in the recording but i just thought i'd share that um yeah, so if it's not apparent already, I spent a lot of time figuring this out. And I think this is going to be an amazing thing for some people. I think, I really think this is the big one. Um, I am absolutely stunned by these images. And I am so stunned that I'm going to take you guys on a flight now, and we're going to go see what it looks like, okay? Um, we're going to go take a little ride up to uh, Point of Petrie in Guadalupe, which is just north of here. So let's go rotating beacon on, make sure and prop full forward, master and battery switches on, fuel pumps on, avionics master coming on, crack the throttle, toes on the brakes, and... Take a look outside, make sure there's nobody out there to kill or maim. And there isn't. And engage the starter. Good start. And you know, back to both, throttle to 1000 RPM, check our oil pressure. Oil pressure is good. Fuel flow is good. Turn the fuel pump off. All right, so. Um, uh, set our altimeter. Um, yeah, I mean, this is going to be pretty much the same as the, I already have my brake off. Okay. Um, you know, I did this demo flight yesterday that you guys were able to see how this looks, but I figured may as well just do it now because, uh, and, uh, and something else might come to mind as I. Why are we not moving here? Okay. Um, Lay sounds. Traffic. Uh, Bonanza. Three six Mike Romeo taxiing. I'm going to be back taxiing Romeo Niner. Full length for departure. The sands. And this is another one of the really really cool little airports in the Caribbean. Um, if you if you land here, we're we're going towards the the arrival end of the runway. You land right through that valley that you see ahead of us um the one thing you will get some of this you know i don't know what you want to call it um aliasing you know on on fences and things like that but it's really pretty limited um really very limited um the other thing i was going to tell you guys is one of the critiques of let me let me get airborne here and i'll tell you that um 
want to use every inch of this runway that we can, which the painters did too, apparently. Oh, that's that's the old image because I've got a, I've got a. Uh, this is a, a freeware. Uh, TFFA, Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot Alpha is the uh, in the, is the uh, airport identifier for this airport. Look on flightsim.to and get this this graphic or this update. It's really good. Uh, this scenery package rather. Okay, mixture is rich. I'm gonna do a notch of flaps. I already got. That. I'm gonna do one notch of flaps. All right. Lesance traffic, uh, Bonanza 36 Mike Romeo departing runway 09 will be left crosswind departure to the north, Lesance. All right, and holding the tow brakes, we'll go full power. Power looks good, release the brakes. And off we go. Meant to adjust my rudder. Touchiness, but I haven't done so. Alright, guys, let's go commit aviation. Uh, gears coming up. Look at that water, guys. I mean, look at that. And I'll go flaps up. Let's get the nose down, get some airspeed here. And the re kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to show you this, I mean, look at the depth perception here close in where we're looking right now and also in the distance. I mean, it's just, it's crazy good. <laughs> the image is just, because it's, it's, it's 2.25 times 2K. So this is a 4K image on a 2K screen. And it's just, it's just wacky good. It's just wacky good. Um, so one of the critiques that I got, in particular on the first um, DLSS video, was that I didn't do a before and after, you know, showing these numbers. So therefore, I was a fraud and a fake, and it didn't work. Um, I didn't do a before and after for this one either because I, I really didn't have a plan, so to speak. Right? Um, manifold pressure. Uh, prop RPM coming back. I really didn't have a plan, and I didn't know at the outset that this would work. That's where we just departed out of, right there. Shot for the uh, for the video later. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why the plan's doing this, but um, yeah, what's your warning? Um, why is the gear down? Oh, I know. Oopsie. Okay, so I have a phantom. I have a phantom setting in this uh, on my Honeycomb Bravo that I'll have to fix later, but um, so the reason I didn't do a before and after um, is because really neither time did I know what I was doing was going to work and therefore um you know, kind of planned it out. Um, but here's the deal. Like, if, you know, I make this claim that this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, and you guys try it, and it's garbage, I'm not doing myself any favors. You know, I'm not doing you guys any favors. But mainly, I'm, I'm not, I'm hurting myself. Because, you know, I am trying to build a channel. Um, you know, to share what I love about flying and, sim and you know, flight simulation. Um, 
for those of you who don't know, I'm an FAA rated, uh, instrument rated private pilot. Um, level off of 3,000 here. 50 feet below our cruise altitude. Start pulling. The RPM's back. And pull the manifold pressure back over 23 squared here. So if I, you know, make the claim that I'm making here, and it turns out to be not true, you guys aren't going to come back and watch any more of my videos. So what, so what good have I done myself? None. Right? Um, so it's really, it really only makes sense for me to share something that I think is going to work. And the way the world is nowadays, everybody, you know, everybody's a critic. And, and I had a lot of, uh, I shouldn't say a lot, I had some negative feedback on the other the DLSS stuff and like oh this doesn't work and uh, and it doesn't work for everybody I don't know why some you know it's it's hard to understand uh, and you can see right now my GPU is getting pounded 98% if I get any more stuttering what I'm going to do exactly what I just told you guys to do. I think one of the things that really has a lot of effect on the sim is the clouds. Uh, I really think clouds um, affect performance quite a lot. Um, but, like, I don't I don't benefit from putting out information that's not true you know and I don't uh, you know um, and that's you know so so anyway um, the other thing uh I mean, just look at how, look at the ridges in the in the hills there and everything. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. And I'm still pegged at 60 frames per second. Um, let's see here. Point of Petra traffic, uh, Bonanza 36 Mike Romeo is 10 miles to the south, inbound runway 12, Point of Petra. Um... So this is the main airport on the island of Guadalupe. I picked Guadalupe because Guadalupe is big enough. It gives us some scenery to look at. Um, it was some beautiful scenery to look at, as a matter of fact. Um, I mean, look at this. Amazing beaches down over here. So Guadalupe is a really amazing place to visit. Um, if any of you are fans of the TV show Death in Paradise on BBC, they film it on the other side of this hill right here, on the far side of that hill. Uh, and we went out there to visit uh, two years ago now. Props back to 21. Power back to 19. And, uh, and Ralph Little and the crew, the cast and crew, are all just tremendous people. We had so much fun. Um, I'll make a little bit of a left turn here. Look at, I mean, just look at this image. It's just stunning. And I've really only flown with this setting like twice or with this exact setup that pretty much nails it for me no 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 we're not we're not climbing no 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 um there's the airport um so it's going to take some some figuring for me as well this this might not be what I end up doing. I might find out that 
you know, I need to tone it down a little bit. Um, let's see. Point of P-Train traffic, uh, Bonanza 3-6 Mike Romeo, uh, right base, runway 1-2, Point of P-Train. And if any of you are French, and I'm pronouncing this incorrectly, I'm sorry. And so, to get a good right base for runway 1-2, we want to have the 1-2 on our right hash mark there. So now I can start pulling the nose up, burn off some energy. And once we do that, put in the first batch of flaps. And Guadalupe is a big island. And it is absolutely gorgeous. It's a beautiful island. So again, we might get some... Get some... Uh, performance issues coming in here. There's a big airport. This is... Uh, this airport is done by... SLH Sim Designs. One of the in my opinion, one of the best not only airports, but one of the best developers Microsoft Flight Simulator and right, enough pictures right, and now I think we can go second Bunch of flaps, down the gear. Hey, yeah, about three mile final, so a thousand feet should be pretty good. Alright. Point of Petra traffic, uh, Bonanza 3 6 micro Romeo turning a three mile final runway 1 2. Point of Petra. Alright, I like my airspeed. Very happy with my airspeed. So I'm going to trim that out. We go prop full forward, and I'm gonna start bringing in some power. So I can keep my airspeed where I have it. About 90 knots. Keep that descent rate. We got 25 knot headwind. That's why we're. That's why we're. The big thing when you're trying to figure out how fast you want to descend, is ground speed. If I descend at 500 feet a minute right now, because I got a 30 knot headwind, 20 knot headwind, we're going to wind up landing in the trees. So. basically got a little low here. And the one thing, if you're dragging it in like this, and you get low, don't drag it in. Just put some power in and climb. Get yourself back on a good wide slope and then resume your descent. And I think that's white over red there on the pappies on the left hand side. So now I will resume my descent rather than just dragging it along slowly with the nose sticking up in the air and a lot of power in it's a poor way to land an airplane so now we can come back with the power now we can come back with the power P3 traffic and Bonanza 36 Mike Romeo short final runway 1 2. Point of P3. Let's 
seeing now, rather than dragging it in, two white over two red. Airspeed is good. Piston, but I do like being on glide slope. No, 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 no. I've got realistic turbulence set, which is not realistic, so. Well, this video is not going to be any good if I don't make a decent landing, is it? Float, 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 float. And you want to touch down. Yeah, it's good. You want to touch down in a takeoff pitch attitude. And I'm going to pull some. Pull the mixture a little bit. I'm going to put the flaps up so I don't go flying again. Um. So that is uh, a demo of of course this is the other thing when you land on the far end of the runway and you've got a mile to cover before you turn off um so that's a demo of what we are looking at here. And I am going to see we're still getting 50, 50 frames per second. Uh, I'm going to go into the main terminal just because the main terminal is really cool. And then this way you guys can see it as opposed to me going to GA parking. Um, and this, uh, it is at this point that I realized that I did not turn my nav and strobe lights on or my landing light. Um, you want your landing light on under 10,000 feet for visibility. It's like daytime running lights in a car. Point of p -tray traffic, uh, Bonanza 36 Mike Romeo, clear of runway 12, uh, point of p -tray. Um, so here we are in Guadalupe. So you were getting about, I mean, this is a pretty complex airport. You can see some shimmering here on this. Happens, right? I mean, there's going to be some, there's going to be some of that. But I can live with a little bit of that for 4K on a 2K monitor with this kind of performance, you know? And again, I may tweak this, but I've shown you guys how to tweak this. Come to a stop, pull the mixture idle cut off, set the parking brake, and our lights off, avionics, master switch off, mags off, uh, master and battery switches off. So um, there's a demo, demo flight. You can see what uh, Point of Petrie Air Airport looks like. Um, yeah, and this is uh, this is the big thing. This is the one I've been wanting to share with you guys the last couple of days. And I may do some adjusting on my side, you know, settings-wise to see what uh, to see what works best. And I hope that I've given you guys a good overview of how this works, how to do it and how to tweak it um, so that you guys can get awesome visuals and awesome performance in Microsoft Flight Simulator and the other thing I want to the last thing I'll show you is look at how spectacular the clouds look they're like completely unpixelated that's one thing I've, I've noticed um, so I hope you guys are doing well and uh, please let me know what you think talk soon